The water efficiency credit category in LEED V4.1 for existing buildings aims to reduce potable water consumption. LEED system goals explain what LEED aims to achieve. The concepts within the water efficiency credit category touch on many of these goals, but obviously focus most directly on protecting and restoring water resources. Here is the list of the LEED V4 prerequisites and credits. In LEED V4.1, all of these prerequisites and credits have been replaced with the water performance prerequisite. All of the previous prerequisites and credits that you saw in LEED V4 were focused on using less potable water. LEED V4.1 focuses on the water performance of the building. The performance score reflects how much potable water the building is using. This is one of the five performance scores that projects earn in LEED V4.1. Let's review what contributes to the score and how projects earn points from it. To generate a water performance score, projects enter data showing potable water use for the project. The score is then calculated based on occupancy, gross floor area, operating hours, and daily potable water use. Projects enter data into the platform for 12 consecutive months of potable water use. This includes all end uses, irrigation, HVAC, restrooms, pantries, cooling towers, fixtures, and so forth. Interiors projects that do not have fixtures or fixture fittings in the project scope are exempt from the requirement to obtain a minimum water performance score of 40, but all interiors projects must still input 12 months of potable water use data and calculate a water performance score for the project. Through the platform, projects can enter data manually through USGBC's data import spreadsheet or connect to existing data sources such as Energy Star, smart meters, or a building automation system. In addition to the water use data, projects must also provide documentation in the form of utility bills or meter readings for annual review. These bills must show total building consumption, including irrigation and outdoor water use. Reclaimed water can be included and would offset water from the potable water supply system. So, how does potable water use translate into the water performance score? The water performance score factors in the amount of potable water use per person and per gross floor area. Water use is first adjusted based on operating hours. Then, the project's daily water consumption per occupant and daily water consumption per gross floor area are input into the water scoring function for the specific project type to produce a water performance score. As you would expect, lower potable water use results in a higher water performance score. As with each of the performance scores, projects earn a 0 to 100 score to give an easy to understand snapshot of how the building is performing. To achieve certification, projects must earn a score of at least 40 out of 100 in each category, including water. These 0 to 100 scores for each category are then weighted to reflect the contribution each category makes to lead system goals. The 0 to 100 water performance score is weighted out of 15. So, the required 40 out of 100 score corresponds to at least 6 points. Here's how the 0 to 100 water performance score translates into lead points. As you can see, projects can earn up to 15 points in total. Once projects see how they are performing, they can then use strategies to improve their score. These strategies come directly from the LEED V4 rating system. The indoor and outdoor water use reduction credits, as well as cooling tower water use and water metering credits, outline steps that projects can take to first reduce potable water use, then consider non-potable sources of water. As projects implement these strategies and use less potable water, their water performance score will rise. In summary, the water efficiency credit category in LEED V4.1 for existing buildings consists only of the water performance score, LEED v4.1 evaluates and rewards projects directly for reducing their potable water use.